Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we're going to prepare for the math portion of the revised GRE. We've been solving math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it in order to work the problems that uh, that we're going to solve together. We are on. This is our second day, day number two. We are on page number 111. Let's turn to page number 111 and on it, you will see a problem. We are given a picture here that looks something like this. P, Q, R, and then S. And we are asked, we are asked to compare the length of P to S uh, versus the length of S to R. S to R. Before I actually start solving the problem, allow me to digress for a little bit. These these three points here, P, Q, and R. Do you know what they're called? Corners of a picture. Corners of a picture are called vertices, which is plural. The singular of vertices is vertex. If you're asking, sitting there asking yourself, what am I going to do with the information? What am I going to use it in my life? The answer to that question, where are you going to use that information in your life? The answer is nowhere. But in order to take the exam, you need to know these terminologies. So if the question is talking about a vertex or vertices of a picture, I want to make sure that you understand that vertices of this picture means only P, Q, and R. S is not a vertex. It's not a corner. Anyway, we are given a picture here and we are asked to compare the length of P to S versus S to R. Now the way the picture is drawn, the way the picture is presented to us in the book, it looks like the length of PS is same as SR, in which case the answer would be C. But, yes there is a but part, but, but the pictures, this is something you have to remember in, for the GRE, pictures in the GRE, are not drawn to scale. All the pictures that are presented to you in the exam on the GRE, they are not drawn to scale. Back in the old days, many, 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 many moons ago, when you sit down, when you sat down and you took your SAT, those were the good old days. The pictures on the SATs are drawn to scale. As a matter of fact, on the SAT, if there happens to be a scenario where the picture is not drawn to scale, you will see a caption, you will see a notation under the picture, it will say, not drawn to scale. The exact opposite applies in the GRE. If the picture happens to be drawn to scale, which does not happen very often, but if it happens to be, you will see a notation underneath it, it will say drawn to scale, but that happens very, very rarely. All the pictures on the GRE are assumed not to have been drawn to scale. For example, for example, let me give you a very simple, very ridiculous example to make you understand here. There's a building A and a building B. Which building is taller? Which building is taller? Building A or building B? Well, you can't just sit there and point to it and say, well, of course you can see the bloody thing. Building A is taller. No, the building A is not taller. Well, I shouldn't say the building A is not taller. What I should say is building A is not necessarily taller. You can't just go by the picture. The problem has to give you some information, some data, some, some concrete uh, bits of knowledge which tells you the height of this building and the height of that building. Then and only then you can ascertain that A is taller. You can't just look at the bloody picture. It doesn't work that way. The same exact thing is going on here. Even though S, the way it is drawn, ha happens to be right here in the middle, for all we know, the P to S, or rather Q to S, could very well be this. For all we know, S could be located towards 
the right hand, the right, right side of the picture, in which case P to S, in which case P to S will be more than S to R, and if P to S is more than S to R, the answer would be A in this scenario. Or, or for all we know, the point S would be way over here. In which case P to S would be smaller than S to R. And then in that scenario the answer would be B. So the way the picture is drawn, the way the picture is presented to you, most people in, 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 in their haste, in their rush, will conclude that the C is the answer. But as you can see, it could answer could be C, it could be A, or it could be B. We do not know the location of the S. There is nothing in this in this problem which tells me any knowledge, which tells me any which gives us any information for us to be able to locate but for us to be able to give a precise location of the point S on the picture. We do not know where point S is located, therefore the answer is D. That's all. Let's see, what do we have on the next page? Ah, on the next page we have an algebra problem. Let's save, the for, let's save that for tomorrow. On day number 3, we'll tackle it. And we'll see what happens. Alright, I will see you tomorrow on day number 3 where we will solve the problem that you see on page number 112 that's the idea I'm just going to go through page by page and if the page happens to have a, if the page happens to contain a math problem you and I are going to solve together some of them are going to be very simple very straightforward and some of them are not so but we're going to do all of them regardless of how ridiculously simple the problem may turn out to be I'll see you tomorrow on day number 3 okay